guys, it's Julesy, and it's time for another pop snark from the low brow to the high brow, as long as your eyebrows are on fleek. Huh? Let's get right into it. This week, I am sipping on some grapefruit juice, because I just got back from a wedding, and I'm going out of town for a wedding last minute, and, um, and unexpectedly didn't come back to my house until last night, and I left my house on Friday. I thought I was going to be back on Saturday. So that's why this pop song is falling and I've been drinking all weekend because I went with some boys and all boys do is drink and party and drink some more. Notes on my phone. First off, let me just say that all these YouTube tutorials on here, I know you're asking for my hair. They're crochet lock extensions that are not done. Like half of my head is done. Half of the half of my head that has hair on it is done. Like my For it to take the entire week and six packs of Marley hair that it's taken, I just feel like so many of these tutorials be lying and the sake of making this issue look easy and it ain't. And it, I know there was some talk or some banter earlier last week about black celebrities not stepping up and speaking up on to the Black Lives Matter I Can't Breathe Eric Garner campaign. Um, I know Jay-Z was getting a bit of slack about it, but he actually helped facilitate the shirts that were want, worn by the Cleveland Cavaliers and some other basketball players, the I Can't Breathe shirts. The ones that had them in Comic Sans kind of made my soul sad, but I'm really appreciative of just the effort in general to stand up and seeing all these celebrities kind of band together and realize that this is something that not, cannot go unsaid. Um, and we do need to talk about it. I get the age of clickbait and all that, but... Fox News just be taking it too far, and quite frankly, I feel like a lot of times these headlines happen that are disrespectful, um, or these articles that are happening that are blatantly disrespectful, whether it is to women or black people or whatever minority people are subjugating at the time. It's, just don't share it. Don't, because they're just doing it because it gives them visibility, it builds their brand awareness, and it gets them clicks and ad revenue. That's what everyone does it. That's why there's no chill when it comes to this stuff. And, you know, I know every time we start this kind of conversation around the violence uh, committed against the authority against black people, that somebody always comments about what all about black on black crime. Now, Ta-Nehisi Coates wrote a really good article maybe three, four years ago in The Atlantic about like showing the statistical information, showing how communities have reacted to this kind of theory of black on black crime. It's an oxymoron. Every person in America has a higher threat of being killed or having crimes committed against them by their own community. White, if we're gonna talk about black on black crime, we might as well talk about white on white crime, Chinese on Chinese crime, Korean on Korean crime. It's not a crazy thought. These communities are actively protesting and raising some type of awareness about what is going on in the community. And it's summer, I believe it was earlier this summer, there has been a lot of talk about what is going on with the crime in Chicago. It is a complete war zone happening in Chicago now. I am to the point that, you know, as much as I want to like Nicki Minaj when she does a song with Little Herb called Chirac, I just couldn't stand behind it and I really just don't like the term Chirac. I feel like it glorifies the idea of how bad the crime rate is in the lower income neighborhoods of Chicago. And on top of that, I just doubly can't get behind someone like a Chief Keef. Uh, or any other kind of gangster rapper that's glorifying these kind of lifestyles that's perpetuating a lot of the problems that are going on in these communities. Now, it's not to say that Chief Keef is to blame with the 300 squad at the end it, whatever, is to blame for what's going on in neighborhoods like Chicago. And other, there are neighborhoods that have similar issues, but I think Chicago is the most visible and kind of easiest to attack up front. It feeds the kind of the complexity of the issue, you know, and I feel like it's our duty to kind of, as people, even if we don't live in these communities directly, it doesn't directly impact us, you know, as self-aware individuals to be aware of the choices that we make and how they might project certain standards or lack of standards. Um, it's also why I've taken more of a note to stop watching Coon television. But to get to the point, this past weekend, um, identical twins, Demario and De Demacio, excuse me if I am butchering the one's boy's name, they would have turned 16 tomorrow, robbed by four other teenagers for their coats. And apparently one of the boys, Dem 
Demacio, I believe, got in a fight with the guy trying to take his jacket. And Demario like pushed the guy off his ja off his brother, and the 17 year old Carlos Johnson shot and killed Demario. I think this highlights so many issues, and we don't have enough time in Pop Snark, unfortunately, to get into it. I'm, the story's been on Gawker; it's getting coverage on main news channels. You know, we're talking about it. This is not a time to berate the community about why aren't we talking about black on black crime? Like, stop it! It's an idiosyncrasy. It's not a productive part of the conversation. Like, I'm not fucking with it at all. You know, I think the community is standing up and saying something. These kids were walking to a basketball game, you know, and then I don't want the conversation to turn in, well, why didn't he just give up his jacket? He would still have his life. Like, this is the problem with respectability politics. This is, this highlights so many issues that are happening in our community and the dialogue that hopefully we can, I just hope that we can raise awareness and move past all these things to really get to the productive angles to change the way society is moving right now. It's at what point does the death of a young black person not become, oh well what were they doing issue? Why doesn't it become, why are we killing them issue? Hopefully we as communities, when we're looking towards doing our community service or giving back through the holiday season, we could think a little further than just feeding the homeless or giving young children gifts. We can think a little further about how we can impact our community and the things that we can do, whether it is joining Big Brother, Big Sister or doing an after school program or tutoring or reading to a young child or being active in your church or just being active in your community and making sure that the kids on your block are okay. Like doing simple things. I think we've moved away from a sense of community and we all kind of live very individualistic lifestyles now. So just hopefully every little bit of effort can kind of come together and maybe we might see some change in the near future. Into the new black Negro, Lawrence Otis Graham, who I've talked about in one of my pop snarks. I think I talked about him on pop snark number two or three. He's one of those new blacks. He had an article featured in Washington Post not too long ago where he's talking about the rules that he gives for his young black sons to keep them alive. Like they can only, they can't wear t-shirts unless they have a name of prestigious school or company on them. They're not to wear any hooded wear at all. Nothing with hoods on it. They cannot run down the block and at night. And so again, my Negro, L-O-G, can you call him L-O-G? L-O-G was in a, um, there's a video on Facebook that's been floating around this past week and he is reiterating and giving us visuals to these rules that he has for his son and he even quotes the fact that his son said to him, you are taking the fun out of being a teenager. And he says he doesn't care because this is gonna keep his children alive. Now what I would like to say to my man, my man, Mr. Graham, the unfortunate part about this is there's a lot of black people in America that think this is it. It's this respectability politics where we tell our children excessively that they have to follow all of these rules in order to survive. And I think one of the saddest things for me in, in watching these videos about the young man, Mr. Bailey, who lost his life this past weekend in Chicago, is watching his peers reiterate how hard it is that they have to fight every day for their life, that they never have a moment to relax or to just breathe and just live. And so it's 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 in, interesting to me that we can have this whole campaign around I can't breathe, right? And we're quoting Franz Fanon and Malcolm X and James Baldwin and Martin Luther King and all these people who have kind of come before us and talked about how hard it is as a black person in this world to simply breathe. And we ourselves are de are restricting our airflow by putting these really harsh rules on our children. Now that's not to say that, you know, I don't disagree with every rule that Mr. Graham has, you know, I get it. I don't appreciate seeing Negroes with they, they draws out neither. But it gets excessive when we start to think that decorum is what's going to save our children. It's not decorum that got Demario Bailey shot this weekend, you know? It's not decorum that had Eric Garner murdered. It's not decorum that would have saved Renisha McBride or any of these other people that are losing their lives over just bullshit ass reasons. Decorum is not going to save your soul. Yeah, this is a pretty heavy week. I, all my notes for everything is like so sad. Um, you know, Beverly came out and said that she was drugged by Bill Cosby in a Vanity Fair article. Um, and it's just to the point where like Bill Cosby is really riding this wave where he feels like he is using this kind of don't bring down the black man rhetoric to say that he didn't do any of these 
allegations that are against him. And I honestly don't feel like the case against Bill Cosby is inherently about bringing down the black man. I'm, I really think it's like, nah, my nigga, like, you drugged and raped some women. Like, that don't matter what the color of your skin is. You on some Dan Sandusky shit right now. Like, for real? For real? And it's just so sad to see so many of my colleagues who are young black men try to buy into this story that these women are only coming out against him because they want to tear down the black man. And it's like... At what point can we not get past victim shaming? You know, this whole kind of disposition of the Rolling Stone UVA rape case and people really trying to attack and tear the story down. And I talked about this in my last pop snark about the young girl Jackie, who Rolling Stone wrote a sweeping and very gruesome piece about the rape culture at UVA. And instead of actually addressing the problem that there, it doesn't matter how grotesque the rape actually was, it happened. Somebody was sexually assaulted and nothing was done about it. And so why are we trying to deflect and blow up all the smoke and mirrors and not address the issue of women's rights and, and the, the ideologies that we are imbuing our youth with to think that it's okay to take advantage of a woman's body in this manner? T.T. Branch, one of the co-founders of Miss Jessie, apparently uh, passed away due to uh, suicide on December 4th and it was... It broke, the news broke this morning, I believe. Um, you know, her family is definitely in my prayers. I definitely wanna give condolences out to the Miss Jessie's fa family and the Branch family. Um, and I really don't think this is the correct platform for me to talk about anything else <laughs> with regards to that. You know, I've already been very vocal about mental health. As a matter of fact, my last Smart Brown Girl video was about emotional health. You know, I've talked about loneliness and the strong black woman ideal and I don't really want to say too much more about the passing of TT Branch because honestly the Washington Post article was basically a summaration of the Lipstick Alley uh, board. It's funny every time somebody passes away recently and it's kind of like you can't really find any news sources you google it. LSA is always like always the first on google search and so I read through the thread because I was trying to figure out where this information was coming from and then, so when I read the Washington Post article, I'm like, okay, well, this is basically just, you know, they summed up what all the women said on the thread. And the only other person that's talked about it is the NV Magazine. So, the family hasn't released a statement yet. She is a million, multi-million dollar company. I'm sure they have a PR firm. They have not released a statement yet. Um, so I just don't really want to talk too much and hypothesize too much about what was going on because I don't know. And out of respect for her and her family because this is very rough and a very hard time. And I think there's a reason why it took us 10 days to even find out that it happened. I'm just, I don't, I don't need to get on my, I don't need to say much more, you know. I really, really, really respect their privacy right now. And I really feel like we should leave it at that. And if you feel like this is a time to, um talk about mental health, please just don't be too overt in directing it at what you think TT may or may not have been going through. Um, and then just generally speaking, be the friend that you need to someone else. That's the best way to start in helping others with their mental health. Dawn Richards, um, do we remember her from Making of the Band? Was that the show she was on? Diddy, Diddy K? She has completely changed her look. Like, she don't even look like the same person. Like, you, somebody tweeted her and said, God won't recognize her. And she said, well, they still rec, as long as them checks are still coming, she don't care. And I guess, you know, everyone still always puts it back to as long as they make it money, nothing in life matters, which is so, such bullshit. I don't, I don't know what's going on in Dawn's head. But she's had a lot of work done on her face. And what, what sticks out to me is, like, when you go to procreate and have children, and your kids come out looking like your old self, how are you gonna tell your children that they're beautiful? Um, so you know, it's interesting. We'll all see how Northwest comes out to be because she's gonna look like the old Kim, Kim Kardashian. So that'll be interesting. But you know, that wasn't a shot. That wasn't a shot. I'd just be saying it. And she was raised in a household that's very keen on plastic surgery. So, you know, what happens to the child's psyche and kind of self-esteem and such? I don't know that let me know what you guys think about that i did watch the real housewives of atlanta last night can we just get to a really brief quick recap candy candy burris tucker candy irks my soul 
Like, she went so bad to me, the nice, get along with everyone person. And she is just the biggest hypocrite. I almost believe that Candy is a bigger hypocrite than Lanethia Leakes on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because I just don't know how you can laugh at your mother calling someone, calling your husband and the man you hope to be the father of your children a prostitute and his father a pimp. Like, it's not funny. Don't laugh when your mother says that. Now I get respecting your mother and loving your mother, but why can you, Candy, why can Candy have such deep love and respect for her mother that all sins shall always be forgiven and excused, but she can't understand how Todd can have that same respect and love for his mother. Like she really sat at a dinner table and wanted to check Mama Sharon. May she rest in peace but can't even find the extra notches in her spine to stand up just a wee bit taller Mama Joyce and tell her that her shit do stank and she just is wrong. She wrong, this woman has destroyed your house, destroyed your friendships, she tried to destroy your marriage, and I'm not even the biggest fan of Todd, but Mama Joyce is just wrong. She's wrong on so many levels, and Candy cannot find the words to tell her mother that she's wrong, but wants to check everybody else when it comes to them telling her that her mom is wrong. It's just the conundrum that exists in Candy's mind is mind boggling to me. And I'm just like, girl, I don't know if the paycheck is that serious enough that she wants to really continue on with the storyline. But um, I don't be getting it at all at this point. VH1 is an, on my ain't shit list as well. Tonight supposedly is the premiere of a show called Sorority Sisters. Now for those of you that don't know, I am a member of the Divine Nine, one of the historical black sororities that was founded on community service and change. Now, girl, I'm praying that this is just a show full of women in like black sororities that were founded in the last 20 years and they can still go out to Denny's with their founders for breakfast or lunch. Um, I'm really hoping that these women don't wear their letters. It's, it's sad enough that we have to claim Kimberly Pate, otherwise known as K. Michelle. But I'm just not getting down with someone getting on. It's like, wait, did, you can't even do it. Like legally, legally, the sorority that I'm in, they can legally sue you for misrepresenting the sorority on any sort of media. Like you could get your letter snatched for a tweet and it has happened. So why? I'm just, I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not gonna support it. I don't do coon television. Uh-uh. Um, I know that the two, that is Delta Sigma Theta and both Alpha Kappa Alpha um, released statements last week um, informing their members to not wear their letters during the protest. I don't really agree with my sorority making that stance, but I do understand the place that it comes from. Considering who the leadership currently is, I'm not entirely surprised that they made that statement. But I do think it is very, it is rather hypocritical to what my sorority was founded for, for them to make that move. And I am saddened that they haven't rescinded that statement. And I'm going to leave it at that. I feel like any other problems I have, I will um, address directly with the sorority. Um, but I know that plenty of my sorors who are protesting in New York have kind of pushed back. And it's been very admirable to see sorrows who are higher ranking and of caliber push back and not just be all the like the teeny bopper younger sorrows that are like oh f the establishment you know it's been good to see other older sorrows kind of collectively come together and push back and say you know there's a big this is a cause that's bigger than us and we are we think we should stand together on this that's all that we have this week for pop snark what do you, i want you to answer down me below if you were candy how would you handle this feud between Mama Joyce and Mama Sharon? Do you, does anyone out there actually agree with how Candy's handling everything? Am I the only one that just doesn't understand how her mind works? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, there will be links to all the things that I mentioned for your reading. Smart brown girl and up girl. Have I not sipped any more of my grapefruit juice? <laughs> oh, and I finally got my sweatshirt. This is what my sweatshirt looked like. Do you like my sweatshirt? <laughs> it's not even off the shoulder, it's just scoop neck, ladies. See, look how nice that it looks. I love it. I'm so 
happy. I'm feeling good. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and share. Share the wealth. Inspire the smart brown girl. Ugh, are your eyebrows on fleek? Too much you say. Don't